Welcome to FDR Tech. Today we have this portable computer. This is an NEC PC8300 created by Kyocera for NEC as well as other manufacturers. This computer was introduced in 1984 and replaced the NEC 8201-A. This features an 80C85 2.4 MHz Intel CPU as well as 32K of RAM up to 64K max, and that's K kilobytes, an RS-232 port, parallel ports, as well as a barcode reader, phone jack for a modem, fixed disk drive port, a reset button, protect button, an 8.5 volt port, and a tape port where you can actually load programs from cassette tape onto the computer. Around back, we have, with the cover removed, these are our two slots. Here is the first ROM slot that's occupied. You can put in another ROM card or ROM chip if you want. And battery pack, four AA batteries, as well as a switch to provide backup power during, I think, when you unplug this thing. And another expansion slot that I don't know what it was used for. It doesn't really show anything except a little slot right there. So I don't know what that was used for. But this is considered one of the world's first portable computers. Or at least its predecessor, the 8201A. So what we're going to do today is turn this computer on, which we already have done. And go through some features of it. So let's have a look. So on our main screen, we have an eight line display, a redefinable screen character set. You could actually put in a memory cartridge of up to 128K in the special slot, as well as a video monitor interface was available using this slot here, and a bunch of programs too. So this computer runs basic by microsoft so microsoft basic runs on this computer which means you could write basic applications and run them on this computer let's go through some of the applications here we have basic we have a text editor we have a telecom program and then these two files here are actually files i created the .do file is a text file and the .ba file is a basic file this is an application and we're going to go through uh, some of these things in just a little bit. But first, let's talk about BASIC. BASIC was a programming language that still exists in some form today, as in Visual BASIC, although it's a lot more advanced. But BASIC back then was a great program to learn programming on. If we enter it, it'll say NEC PC8201 BASIC version 1.1 by Microsoft. This version of BASIC was created for, like I said, the predecessor of this computer. But basically it's saying, okay, go ahead and run your BASIC code. So let's actually run some BASIC code right now. One that I remember is print, and then we'll put uh, quotation marks, hello world. That's always the first thing you learn to program, at least when I was doing C++ programming in high school. Enter. It echoes back, hello world. We just ran our first program that we created. Simple program, but you get the idea of how BASIC works. And I'll actually show you some code in a second. Let's try load. So hit load. We're going to do that golf program. And I don't know if it'll show because it's been created, but let's see. Okay, so it won't show it. It's just going to run the program. I don't want to run it yet. But let's go to menu, and we'll show that in a little bit. But here's our text editor. The text editor is basically a text editor. I don't want to have a file to edit. I don't have a file to edit, but let's just call it cats. So it's going to create the file called cats. And here, we could just type in, this is a text, text editor. There you go. Now, there are more options in this than just typing on the screen. I believe 
if you hit Shift F1, it gives you some options here. Now here's a form, which maybe format. There we go. Uh, the header, footer, the page type. Uh, what else? Okay, if we okay, here we go. So if we let off the Shift key, it gives us our other formula options. So here's a left margin, right margin, justification. Let's do justification. So justify. I want to be this in the center. There we go. So it'll put it in the center. I believe when it prints out. And if I want to justify again, let's see, uh, SSP, here's our margin definitions. We'll justify this next one in, let's see, on the right. And then we'll go test. Oops. So what would happen is if we print this, it'll follow this formatting and center this text and then justify this right. So that was pretty cool back then. Uh, what I heard is that many editors, writers, um, news reporters would use these computers to write a story or whatever they needed. And then using the modem, dial in to their office to upload the data to a, a server in order for them to publish it or print it or whatever they had to do. Or they could actually just go in using the ports here and print it out themselves, either using the parallel uh, serial port or the printer port. Um, the printer port actually feeds to a little tiny printer that this one came with. And I'll go ahead and get that and show you that right now. So here's our little printer attached to the printer port. It's the NEC PC8221A printer with a little paper feed button. And this one also runs off of AA batteries. It runs off of, I believe it was, was it five watts? So this runs off of four AA batteries. And clean a little bit of cell one. But yeah, if this one is completely portable, this computer. So let's go ahead and try and print this out. So let's go shift. Here is print. So we'll go print. It's going to say print to what? I'm going to print to my printer port. Here's all my options. And if I just want to print directly to an NEC compatible printer, I would just actually hit print or go. There's no other options I have to fill out. If I were to attach this to a parallel printer or any other type of uh, non-NEC printer, then I could change some of the options in here. But let's go ahead and send this job out. So go is the F5 key. Now it's printing. This is thermal paper, so there is no ribbon, so it just it just lasts. Okay, we'll go ahead and stop it because it doesn't stop on its own, but that's something I'll figure out eventually. But here is our paper. So as you see, in the focus, it says this is a test. Now the this is a test one was the um, let's see this is a test i right justified this one and i centered this one so i wouldn't be quite center but it did right justify this one so that does show you that the um, the formatting does work so that's kind of cool this printer this computer itself was put into service i believe in 1989 yeah june of 1989 according to the little stickers here so that means that this paper and printer are well over 30 some odd years old. Um, so for 30 years old, still prints pretty good. What's great. If you were to heat this up, you would see it change colors because that's it's thermal paper. That's how this works. So that's the printer aspect of this. Pretty cool. So let's go ahead and show the telecom program. Telcom program is what we're going to use to uh, connect to a computer and download or upload data. Or you could use it to connect to the modem and dial into a server such as a BBS or, or another type of uh, telecommunication system. Let's go ahead and clear out of this. Go shift F1. We're going to go back to our menu. So we'll hit menu. 
And we'll move you back over so we can see it. There we go. And let's zoom in a little bit. All right there. Perfect. Okay. So back to our main menu. We looked at basic. We looked at our text editor. Let's look at our telecom menu. So in the telecom program, it's basically asking us what do we want to do with it? Do we want to call somebody? Do we want to connect through a terminal session? So what we're going to do is I don't have a phone line available for this right now. What we can do though is we can terminal into a modern day computer just to show you how that works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this all set up to connect to a Windows 10 computer just to see if technology from 1989 can communicate with a Windows 10 computer from 2023. So let's have a look. So now we're going to upload a program to our PC8300 using the telecom program. The way we do that is using a null modem cable attached to the serial port, as shown. It has to be a null modem cable if you're connecting to a computer. This is the cable that I made, since I didn't want to buy one yet because I didn't know if this was going to work. And yeah, that is cello tape on the ends of the wire leads. I had to actually check them out with a multimeter to see what pin went to what color cable since they're not standardized. But here's the cable again here. But it does work. I will solder them later on. But for right now, they work the way it does. And it works pretty well. So let's go into the telecom program. That is the way we're going to communicate. We go into telecom. We typically have to press STAT first in order to configure the serial connection. So STAT is F3. We'll enter. We're going to accept the defaults. So they, we accept the defaults already. We'll go term. Oh, there you go, terminal. So now we're in terminal mode. So this allows us to now communicate with a, another terminal, such as our computer. Let's go ahead and switch over to the computer itself. And so here on the screen, we're going to be going to web8201.net. This website I found out has some pretty good files that we can use to install on this device, as well as a bunch of information that's really helpful. So the way we're going to do is we're going to download a file from the internet and then upload it. So let's go ahead and go to file downloads. And we'll select the first link. And let's go to games and entertainment. We'll put another game on this thing. So there's a bunch of games on here. A bunch of files. Now what you want to use is you want to download the .ba file. The .ba file is going to contain all the basic lines of code. I'll show one here. If we click on it. See, that's all the basic instructions that the computer is going to inter interpret. And we can actually type that all in ourselves if we want, but I'm not going to. So let's go ahead and go back. And that was with a blackjack game. Let me see if I can actually use that. And it requires a bunch of files. Some of these programs require additional files. Let's just find one that's kind of easy. Um, we have Planet. We have Poker. I don't know how to play Poker. Uh, Starfire, Toxic, Wormy, oh, gosh. let's try Othello, where is that at? I just saw it, Othello, ABC, Othello, there we go, so to download it, right click it, save link as, so when you save the file itself, it's going to want to have the .ba extension, on this computer, we have to actually download it as a document file. So we're going to have to change it to a .do because the terminal program will not accept a .ba file. So we'll go .do. There you go. So we're going to say save. And our file is saved. So now in our terminal program, we're going to connect. And let's make sure we're connected first. So whatever I type on the computer should show up on the screen, which it does. Great. So let's go ahead and send that file over. So if you have Windows or Linux or, you know, whatever operating system, it's going to be different. But basically, we're going to use the X modem protocol. So we'll go Control-A-Z. We're going to say send a file. 
I'm going to be using the X modem protocol. And we're going to go find our file. Let's see, I think it was Othello. Space the tag. We're going to say OK. And now it's going to send Othello. We're going to go download. File the download. .do. Oops, what happened here? Let's go O-T-H .do. Oh, I think I already have a file on here. There we go. X modem, yes. Synchronizing, and now it's receiving the blocks. So now it's receiving the file from our computer over here. So once it's done, it says end of transmission. It has now completed. So we'll go ahead and stop that. There we go. Shift. I'm going to say bye. Disconnect. Yes. And if we go back to our main menu, you're going to see it downloaded oth.do. That was the file that we just downloaded. So let's go ahead, disconnect from the computer. If you want more information on how to download files and upload files, maybe in Windows or in Linux again, leave a comment below and I might make another video on that for you guys, just to show. Um, it was a bit complicated for me to figure this out originally because there's not a lot of great videos on it. So I just kind of wanted to show you an overview. But basically here is our oth.do file. Now we gotta convert this to a .ba file. So what we'll do is we'll head into basic. We're gonna say load. We're gonna bring up our file. And it's case sensitive. We'll hit enter. It's gonna say wait. Now it's gonna say wait for a little while until it loads it into memory, I believe. It could take a couple minutes. So we'll go ahead and wait. And then when it's ready, we'll go ahead and run our program. Okay, that took about a minute. So now the Othello program is loaded. It says OK. So we can either run it right away or save the file. Let's go ahead and save it first so we don't have to do this again. So the way we do that is we'll hit save. We're going to now say we're going to call it oth.ba. You have to have the ba now in order to save it as a basic file. So we have oth.ba. Hit OK, or Enter. It's going to say, OK, I'm saved. Now if we go back to our menu, uh, there we go, oth.ba. If you were to go to the DO file that we downloaded earlier, it's just going to give us the actual code. So here's all the code that's in there, as you can see. And this doesn't do anything for us. Here's the actual basic code right here. And so we can't actually use that, so what we'll do is we'll go back to our menu and we'll go ahead and run the Othello game under the BA file. So this is greetings from Othello. Make sure caps lock is off because it is case sensitive the way the code is written. Now I don't know how to play this game very well and I haven't been doing great since I tried it but real quick you're supposed to block the O's right here. I'm the X's. So I think I can go to three and these are these columns here are A, B, C, D, and so on. So let's go to three A, B, C, D. So let's go to three D. Enter. I put an X there. Change it to an X. Now the computer is now going to think and put its own piece down to try and block me. It takes a few seconds. It'll figure it out, and then it should say that gives one piece. It takes a second for it to show up. I don't know why. There we go. So now it decided that one. I don't want to forfeit. So let's go ahead and block him. Let's go 4ABC. So 4C. That doesn't flank. Okay, so 5A. So how about 5B. And that doesn't work either. Okay, so I'm not very good at this. 6ABCD. Let's go 6D. Six D. There we go. So it took it. See, I don't really know how to play the game that well, but you get the idea of how that works. So let's go ahead and stop. So it's basic code still, so we actually just type in the program itself. It takes us back to our main menu. Let's have a look at golf really quick. This one's kind of cool. It'll show you the graphics capabilities of it. 
Oh, and I chose the wrong file, didn't I? Let's go Shift F1 menu golf.ba. Okay, golf.ba. So this is the golf game. It explains the different types of uh, putters and different irons and woods. Let's get enter to start. This is our directions plus power. So here is our graphic. See how it draws it? That is pretty neat. Here's our little T. I don't know golf that well, so I'm probably calling it wrong. So let's go 1W, which is 1 wood. Direction. Well, it was 1, 2. You can't use the arrow keys. you got to use number keys. So we'll go 2 for an east direction. And we'll say 100. There's some audio for you, too. And there's our little ball. Oh, that's the first time I ever landed in the pond. <laughs> that's actually kind of funny. So that's water, apparently. I did not know that. This must. I think this is a sand trap. Club. Let's go one W. Let's go. I guess they put my ball out there. Let's go direction two. Let's go thirty-five. There we go. Stay out of the sand trap, please. Yeah, it's pretty good. So I think I'm on the fairway. If that's what they call it. I'm gonna go up. Go 50. That gets me pretty close. Oh wow, that's better than I've been doing this before. Let's go 2. Let's go 15. Uh, it's not going to make it. Oh, oh, almost. Let's go direction 2. Uh, let's try 5. There we go. We got a bogey. Pretty cool. So it shows you the graphics capabilities of this game. Or of the, the NEC. Now this is the, the second hole. So let's go ahead and exit out of that. Oh, there's some more water traps. Some more sand. It's a pretty cool little game. Shift stop. I'm sure there's an easier way to get out of the program, but it's the easiest way I found. So that's the NEC PC8300. Now, in the next video we're going to have soon, I'm going to actually cover using a cassette recorder to upload files to this computer using a data cable that came with it. This thing. This plugs into that port in the back here, the CMT port. And then this plugs into the input and output of our cassette recorder. And we're going to actually use a cassette tape that came with this thing. I'll show you the preview video right here. To send data from the cassette to this computer and load a program that actually came with it. So that's kind of cool. So please wait for that video to come out. You're going to like that. Because I'm going to love filming it because I've never done that before. So that'll be my first time. Before we wrap up, I also wanted to show this. This is the printer cable that also came with it. Still new in box. It is a parallel printer cable, so it's the same style. It connects to our printer port. There's the printer ribbon cable style connector again, using a standard parallel printer port, or an LPT type connector. Now, I don't have any printer that actually uses this type of uh, port anymore, so I can't test it, but I just wanted to show you that still new, in box, pretty cool. Made in Japan, very classy. I love the stuff that's made in Japan. It just, I love it. It's great. So, for right now, thank you for watching FDR Tech, and have a great day.